For sure, man. All right, well, listen, man, we got a hot show lined up tonight. We're going to kick things off with my surreal topic of the day. We got music from around the way. We got our throwback track and my favorite part of the show, the pump it or dump it, where y'all get to call in and decide if the track we play is hot or not, all right? Uh, but now, man, without any further ado, man, my special guest chilling with us tonight. I'm excited about this one. All right, man, my man, he's a rapper, he's an entrepreneur, he's a record producer, best known as a member of the legendary hit squad in the building, man, in the flesh, we got K Solo in the house. What's going on, bro? Yo, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, man. Most Florida in the building. What's up? Long Island's in here. Yes, sir. Uh, That's yeah. right. K Solo live in effect, man. The hit squad. Legendary, legendary. All right, bro, man. Um, ready to get ready to do this thing? <coughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's We're going to kick things off with my surreal topic of the day. My topic tonight is hip hop groups can't stay together. <laughs> Talk about hip hop groups can't stay together. That's a good mm. yeah, that's All right. A good one. So, um, you know. I you know really these days I don't think this 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 topic applies anymore because I don't really think there is no hip hop groups and we got the Migos. Other than that, I don't really see no no modern day hip hop groups. Right. You know what I'm saying? So this basically applies to back in our era. You know what I'm saying? Tribe Called uh, Quest stay together though. Yeah yeah yeah. I mean I'm talking about new groups. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Tribe Called Quest. Um, we got a couple of them. Um, Wu Tang kind of together, kind of yeah. not. You know. <laughs> no, they um, they still work as a unit. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's still. So, yeah, man. Um, but, um, you know, a lot of groups ended up breaking up. A lot of stuff just didn't work, man. And I wanted to talk. I know you've been in the group. I've been in the group. Um, I know my next guest, Cuban Link, he's been in the group. Everybody's been in groups and it seemed to, you know, just don't seem to work for uh, hip hop. And uh, and I wanted to get your your opinion. Why you think that is, man? Why you think, uh, you know, <laughs> when it comes to hip hop, we just can't get it right? I think for the most part black culture um, thrives from its own uh, you know it doesn't have it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have its own so there we are and then when you have uh, you know groups and then you have people catering to one guy in the group it change because it, you got to remember this okay so that's a good question by Easy e NWA, same thing with the hit squad. When you have the lawyer talking to one guy in the group, mm -hmm. and Easy E couldn't be this team player without Dr. Dre, Ren, Yellow, and Ice Cube writing, it kind of puts you in a situation where you have no choice but to pull the rug from the feet of the of the axe and let them know. You know, you know, this is not going to be the same. I remember one day Eric Sherman had said when we were breaking up, he said, there's no music, there's no business. Gotcha. You know, because, uh, you know, Parrish was doing the business, which was, you know, he was doing, he was doing, another thing too, you can't, I don't blame none of these guys for these situations. It's like, it's a learning curve in our culture. Like when you're, when you have, you know, the first time you get any money. Yeah. It creates a whole different scenario when you never had anything. Yeah, I, I was gonna. That's definitely one of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, splitting up money, especially when you have a big group like like Wu Tang Clan or Bone Thugs and Harmony or something like that, where you have a lot of members yes. in the group. How do you split that money up? You know what I'm saying? Well, I know the figures now. I went to full sale, and um, I didn't know the figures before. Okay, um, you know, I had no idea. Um, so and and also too, when I f was rapping, me and Redman, we we just knew how to rap. Yeah. You know, we, we were like rappers, rappers. Like, we were like acrobatical rappers, you know. And they didn't really know the business, you know. We right. had a lawyer who told us whatever he could tell us to get his 10%, right? Right. So that's what I mean about our culture. And then I found out later, when I went to school, the splits were. So if there's a record is $18 and you go platinum, that's $10 million, didn't know the figures before. Dr. Dre didn't know him neither. You know, I remember when I was living with Dre, and he said, I know those numbers now. Like, he had knew, because Suge had broke it down to him yeah. what the numbers were. And then, you know, even Dr. Dre didn't know the numbers. You know, he was great at producing. Right. So, us as our culture, we're, we're evolving. That's why 
I moved out here too just to have my own. After I, well, let me just say this. After I learned from Dre, because I lived with him for four years, and I and he just told me to watch. You know, I met Dr. Dre in the first part. I think it was '89. Mm. We were at Jack the Rapper, and he was looking for Tim Dog, and. I just happened to be from New York, and he come to me and said, "Yo, D, you from New York? Where's Tim Dog?" I know who he's talking about. I was like, "What are you talking about?" He said, "Yeah." And then the, one of the guys, I think his name was Solo, Cam's cousin, put his fist up and said, "We're gonna, we're gonna put the Rayfield on him." So okay. I didn't, know, you know, I didn't know what the Rayfield was, but I figured out it was a, it was a beat down. All right. So come to find out, there was, and I and I was looking for him too because you know I met these guys and now we're hanging out, and so that's how I knew Dre, you know, and um. We went through the same thing. Everybody in this culture has an awakening point where they wake up and figure out what's going on and what needs to be done to further their scenario. For sure, yeah. You know, I got to commend Red Man too because Red Man was one of those guys who I kept away from all the drama. I just knew this guy was going to do it. I just, just, he didn't know what I knew. Mm -hmm. I, and I was like, no, no, no. You're going to be bigger than all of us. You just have to do this. And I, pointed out basically what he had to do and that was stay away from people who thought they knew that didn't know Yeah, because everybody freestyles like they know what's going on I'm going to tell you that too rap music is very much like boxing everybody freestyles till they get hit <laughs> and everybody's the man till they get hit Yeah, yeah. it's like a macho <laughs> pissing contest all the way to the casket this is just that's what rap is it's a braggabocious yeah. lyrical content I'm the guy you're not that's right. what it is. So, you know, when you're teaching people ideologies that they don't really know what's going on and they find out later, sometimes it's too late to, to, to figure it out. And sometimes you never recover. I've seen a lot of people figure out at the end and never recover because they didn't have the nuts, the bolts, and the other things that take it. First of all, you need to understand what your money what is, what is your draw to get the money how do you do that so you have to know licensing deals what kind of licensing deals these are how to govern them how they work yeah you have to know how to submit music um to a soundtrack department and stuff like that these are all different things that people are not taught right when you come in the music game right well let me let me stop you right there for a second man i want to um let me let me get another segment i want to do this pump it or dump it segment and i definitely want to come back okay. and i want to chop it up with you about a bunch of things man of i got a whole list of questions and stuff i got for you man but uh yeah we definitely gonna pick yeah. back up on this uh but yeah right right quick i want to do my pump it or dump it segment uh open up these hotlines man y'all call in uh the number is 407-646-2915 um again the number is 407-646 Two nine one five. Y'all could call in, uh, talk about our, our our subject, man. We talking about you know hip hop groups why they can't stay together. Um, we talk about that. Y'all could participate in this pump it or dump it. Call in and let us know if the track we about to play is hot or not. Um, you know what I'm saying? Or if y'all just want to call in and give uh, my man K Solo a shout out. Keep it brief. Remember, we on the radio, no profanity. Do your thing. Um, but right now, I'm about to play this joint right here from my man T-Rex Music. Right here, and this um, uh, song right here is called Let Me Down. Right here on Surreal Talk Radio. Check it out. Let me down, let me down again. Let me down, let me down again. Yes, K-Solo chilling with us tonight. I'm going to go around the board real quick, man, see what the fellas thought. Hey, Solo, we're going to start with you, man. What you think about the track we just played? Should we pump that thing we get rid of? We should pump it. We should pump it. He just said we should pump it. <laughs> All right, man, so we got one. What you say, exclusive, man? You feeling that track? Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that one. Okay. Yeah. All right, Troy, and they got you in the house, man. Pump that All right, man, we're going to you know, let the world know, too, man. Y'all call us, give us your opinion, man, 407-646-2915. In the meantime, we back here with my man, K Solo. All right, bro. Uh, and I always start with the name. You a real alphabetical type of dude, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, K Solo, tell us, man, what does the name K Solo mean to you? It was a name that just I created to use to get in. I was really Wolfgang as a kid, but I used um, K Solo because when I was in jail, I didn't really hang around a lot of people. I stayed to myself, and they would always go, "Yo, Solo." They called me Solo, so. I just threw the K when I got out and um Got you, got you. It really wasn't dope, but it was just an acronym. Yeah, no, for sure. So I say you're a real alphabetical type of dude. Well, I'm just, I get it. The <laughs> thing with that was I was different in the sense of um I wasn't the regular rapper. I couldn't rap about the stuff they rapped about. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because my mother wasn't going for that, man. I couldn't really be explicit. I had to use Shout somewhat. Shout out to mom. Some yeah, my step mother, Katora, game yeah, up, Katora, yeah. Katora, Katora Carey wasn't going. I couldn't talk like that. That's what's up. And I grew up in the Salvation Army. I had a lot of nuns around me that raised me with my mother, so I couldn't talk like that. So Spellbound. Spellbound. Funny, like when DMX says he wrote Spellbound, right? And I'm not. We go hey, we, we, I'm we, not we, mad. We, I love him. Hey, oh, hold listen. on. I'm just saying. We go get to I that. I love we, X. I love him. But it's like, it. it's like, it's like, it's like, I'm an intellectual, though. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. dad wrote books. So I'm a product of my parents. For sure. At the end of the day, my mother was West Indian. And I wasn't allowed to really talk about ignorant conversation. And I was hard on Red Man the same way. Like, Red Man was my real brother. I was hard on him. I was very hard on Red Man. And, um, you know, because I grew up in the Salvation Army. It was military. It was, you know, like, we were like Navy SEAL kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we Red Man, when he wrote Time for Some Action, he was around a real fighter. That's my joint. Time, you know? time for some time. <laughs> yeah, but he was really around real fighters. Like, Ralph yeah. Mann, myself, we were actually pugilists trying to make it. And then when I seen Muhammad Ali shaking, I had a different avenue. And I was like, okay, let me make it in this. Because, you know, I seen Ali shaking, and I didn't think... I would be able to get through the whole career without yeah. doing the same thing because my style was similar to Ali's. I moved hard to hit, uh, fast on my feet. But um, yeah, um, I was an intellectual and I couldn't talk about anything crazy. I couldn't really, I wasn't involved in ghetto activity. I didn't sell drugs. So let's kind of let's kind of walk this thing chronologically, all right? Yeah. So um, the first track, now correct me if I'm wrong, 1989, it's the first time I heard you on an industry record, uh, EPMD, they did the Nick Knack Paddywhack joint. Yeah. Is that the first time you was on a, like an industry record? Yeah, it's okay. the first time. Um, but like I said, I was so into other things that I didn't get a chance to. Uh, and, I, and I, okay, so... Kayla Boss was my DJ first. Okay. I just went to jail. I named him Kayla Boss, went to jail, EPMD, and they took off. Oh, so, wow. Okay. And then when I came out of jail, Paris seen me again and heard me rhyme, and then we we, 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 we rekindled our relationship because previously as a child, I was rhyming for Paris's older brother who was in a group called Rock Squad. And I didn't get in it because... My neighborhood and his neighborhood never got along, and some of my friends beat up him and his friends and <laughs> kicked me out because I didn't want to rat them out, which is cool. I understand. I love James Smith, though, because he was a tutor, helped me get out of high school. It's just that street got in the way of our politics, and then I got kicked out the group. And that was cool. And then Parrish picked me up about five years later, and okay. I was, you know, Marquis and K Solo. Um, so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, the track that y'all was rapping on, uh, a lot of people today would hear that track, and the uh, first thing that come to their mind is Tupac with the California Love, right? The sample. Yeah, um, yeah. What, 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 what you think about that? Like when you hear when you hear you know Tupac resurrecting that uh, you know that beat and rap well, rhyming off of it, make, the, bringing the, new life. This, to it. this how it happened when I was living with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre had that for his album and did that on the strength of me. And before Tupac got there. Well, okay. We getting the exclusive stuff. Hey, I love this. I love this. Yeah, but me, you got to remember too. Me and Dre were pretty close. Like me and Dre were like, they wore the fugitive outfit in the sauce. Into you know that was my outfit, fugitive Carhartt. I'm the first rapper to wear Carhartt okay. in the rap game. Okay. And then when they took the stage in um, Paramount Theater, they all wear the fugitive outfits while I sat in the audience. Mm -hmm. They were paying homage too, to a degree. You know, when Snoop first came out. Okay. You know, it was us grooming Snoop, like DOC, myself, Dr. Dre, Sam Snead, everybody was working to to bring this kid to the forefront. And um, yeah, so Dr. Dre and me have a lot of musical in common. My mentor was Norman Whitfield. When I met Norman Whitfield, Norman Whitfield wrote all of the Motown. Heard it through the grapevine. Uh, Papa was a Rolling Stone. When Norman Whitfield met me at Death Row, he didn't really want me signed to Death Row, and he was like giving me a lot of information and pointers on how to build the next Motown. Just between me and him, and then also um, who else was there for Motown was um, David Ruffin's son, David Ruffin Jr. He's the one that sung the hook for um, Gin and Juice for Snoop's single. 
David oh, Ruffin Jr. Shout out to okay. David Ruffin Jr. Yeah, man. You're yeah, walking yeah. down the street. So that was David Ruffin Jr. And um, wow, man, getting getting that getting that inside stuff, man. That's that's what's up, man. I appreciate that. That you know, yeah. them Jews, man. Yeah, that was solid people. And um, my uncle Frank would put me on all this because he was a jazz guy who was real good friends with Gordon Parks. So that's why. I dubbed myself the light skin Richard Roundtree because I was always in that fold of music and the I light skin Richard. And I would always tell EPMD that too. I was like, yo, this soul thing is gonna come. And then when Biggie came, I yeah. just looked at him. I just looked at everybody. I was like, because I called, I knew that. Yeah. I knew that was coming. But nobody would listen. That's another thing in our community. Nobody never listens to the person next door. Let, let's let's walk this thing down for the people who don't know nothing about because you know a lot yeah, of people yeah, from our era yeah, we know. know but a lot of a lot of people listening in they don't know so let's let them know man you started out rapping with Red Man uh, EPMD uh, Dos Effects Keith Murray um, and y'all was known as the Hit Squad this is back in the early nineties before y'all broke up um, you and Red Man y'all got tight you know um, y'all like brothers and everything you know what I'm saying and then. The hit squad, y'all break up. I got a question for you about this. Um, do, would you do you think that the breakup hurt your career? Uh, do you think it kind of put like a sabotage on your career? In retrospect, I don't think it hurt me because I went to Dr. Dre's and actually learned how to do the thing. <laughs> That's a good question because you would think that, but when I went with Dr. Dre, my thing was this: I just wanted to see how it worked. Right. Because I'm coming from a pugilist background, strictly boxing. My mm -hmm. godfather's Tony Fortunato. Um, they had they were raised in the um, St. Nick's Arena, first boxing hub of New York. Okay. So I really was that groomed to be a fighter. And then when I got to EPMD, I didn't see how it worked. Because I think they were freestyling too. Not that they were trying to hide anything from me. They were freestyling too. Yeah. But when I got with Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre showed me everything. Like, okay. okay, this is how, and I don't tell his secrets. I just don't. Yeah. He, he gave me the ends and be like, okay, this is how it happens. And you know what's messed up? Me knowing that, I would sleep now even better and wasn't in a rush to do it because I knew I could do it anytime I wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, was, a, um, it was like a person that had a lotto ticket because I already knew what he did with Snoop. I got the chance to see Dr. Dre yeah. do Snoop. I didn't have to see nothing else. Yeah, I definitely want to ask you. I definitely want to get to some um, death row stuff with you, man. Um, but uh, let me see where I'm at here. So I'm backing up. Okay. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. All right, so the Hit Squad thing breaks up. Yeah. Um, they start the Death Squad. Right. So they start the Death Squad, and my question is, how did you feel about that not being a part of that, or was you a part of that? I wasn't, I wasn't tripping because Death Squad really didn't have a long run. Right. You know? Red Man had a very good run with Wu Tang. I was happy about that because yeah, you gotta yeah, remember, yeah. I, my whole thing with Reggie and me, and this is real crazy, but I'm gonna be real with you. Black culture is split up. The light skin guys are on one side, the brown skin guys are on another. <laughs> you're it's right, true. You're right about that. And we learn that from white people. We don't do it on purpose. So me and Reggie automatically click because we're light skin. I don't think that's fair, but it is what it is. And if he's winning tomorrow, I'm there too. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm wrong or right, he's still going to be like, do you, do you verse? And it's still going to be the same thing with us. Right, right. And it's always been like that from day one with me. Yeah. And that's you, but you're right about that. I think the um, only thing I, I remember what was the El Nino album. That was or it. Like that, that was it. And yeah. a couple out. And then it didn't. But let me just say this to you too. They didn't know what Dre knew. Does that make sense? No, I feel you. No, definitely. Let me take this call right quick. Surreal Talk Radio, what's up, what's up? Hey, can you guys play that song from T-Rex, please? Play that song again? Just play that. Yes, please. All right, most definitely, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm hitting up the party right here. <laughs> All right, appreciate you. All right, thank you. Um, So, yeah, Def Squad. Yeah, uh, they didn't know, they didn't have the ability to, you know, like, don't get me wrong, talented guys. Oh. Yeah. EPMD had that sound, man, that was just like, nobody had that sound, but it's like, you know, competition is fierce. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, to not be knowing basic, and another, another thing, too, when you split your house up, was their demise. It had nothing to do with no one else. Like, I would hear 
people tried to say, like Keith Murray in an interview said, you broke him up. I'm like, okay, well, that's your opinion. Me and Redman don't feel that way. Yeah. And me and Redman are the cufflers. If me and Redman ain't in it, it's not going to fly the same way. That's kind of what I was getting at from the surreal topic when we first started out was, you know, about how about how groups broke up and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to I wanted to uh, introduce this. This is kind of personal for me. Um, so the hit squad, you know, the death squad thing we just talked about. We got the flip mode squad, got the live squad. Later on, it came the terror squad. All these things, all these squads was out there, right? And so me and my homeboys, this is how we was influenced by y'all is the story I'm telling right now. And so me and my homeboys, we just call ourselves the squad, T-H-A squad. We was like, we just, we the squad, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, we was influenced by all y'all, man. All y'all would, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, all these things together, man. And so anyways, um, basically, long story short is... Uh, I wrote my first rhyme. It was this dude Elliot. Um, then I got started rapping with, and so he he, he one of these days. It was back in '94. Um, he throws on this <coughs> beat. He's this instrumental. We start rapping. I wrote the first rhyme I wrote was, was a song called "I Got the Rhyme to Twist Your Mind." This is back in '94, right? So I actually name drop Redman and Keith Murray in my rhyme. And it's crazy because to this day I still remember this rhyme, and. Uh, Man, this is that burr, 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 burr. This is that surreal moment <laughs> of the day uh, Right here I'm going to explain that in a second But uh, but I want to get it going, man Because, um, like I said, I still remember my first rhyme So I want I, I want to kick that rhyme, man and, and, and This is how we did My man, he threw on the uh, It was the Daz Effects beat So that's why I want to get it going, man and, Woo! Here we go, yeah, exclusive Yeah, it is definitely WBRK, is. exclusive Yes, sir So yeah, man, I wish I could get this thing go. Okay, there it is a little louder So yeah man Like I said My man Elliot He threw on his beat One time We was trying to figure out What we wrote We wrote this rhyme Called I Got The Rhyme And went Yo Surprise The Calico Cat Is on the rise With this hip hop Realize I'm causing niggas To die Why niggas lie Lying on this rap crap Knowing damn well He just can't step to the cat It's two C's With three G's Funkin' in the studio Like some dookie Hip hop be the key To getting luchy Like Redman I ride a Fuji In the movie Got you niggas guessing About my rhymes They come to me naturally Be the answer When it come to paper Chasing septum corn like dimes, cause it bees like that sometime. But I can't control a rhyme like Keith Murray. I'm in a hurry. My vicious lyric like Fist of Fury makes your mind blurry. As I bring it, yeah. So that's how, that's, that's how I was coming. This is 94. But like I said, man, this is the surreal moment of the day. That's real. And what happens is anytime we got MCs in the building, we gotta see where you at with these rhymes, bro. You ready to give us something? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yo, uh -oh. it's the original rap criminal It is I wanna murder, murder, murder When I feel I'm disrespected Run up on them with the tech When they least suspect Like, okay, you wait Got a trick for those snakes I go to jail for it too Master mama on escape The world don't know me nothing I owe me Ain't a prison or a jail In the game, gon' hold me Leave a gap in that main line Strike when I do birds Witness what I did When the gun goes off They scatter like one time Then they go ape shit like Kevin got a gorilla flow Kill him in the spotlight Bang, still the show Like a monster Better yet a Beast, bigger bag over the burn on Halloween Like knock knock trick or treat Beast my way to get the heads fall to a frick see the necks a roll off their shoulders They ain't sick as me, the label saw me They got plans for me They hung myself through a tree to no avail Death ran from me I bit my girlfriend's titty off She got one with the left So I'ma rather hump her like a porno star High and crystal meth My mom can't stand me She gets no respect So when she sleeps she waking up With four prints out her neck Her pop woke up like he heard it So I slid the burner to his back Like he might get murdered Hit her off with that love love Cause she deserved it He was watching I told him Turn around you effing pervert Hit the block in the big black coat Red galoshes Got his daughter in the headlock Screaming You my hostage Cops catch me now It's gonna only get worse I pray to God to get the drop And murder me first See what forensics did To a room in bed I mean now we on the roof With the burner to a head Shorty running the mouth I know I ain't supposed to wait Feds on the bullhorn Talking trying to negotiate Put the gun down Kevin Can we talk about it I see your body on the ground With all this chalk around it And I can kill it Real fast, I already thought about it. Can't even think straight. My thoughts are very clouded. She make them please like we on YouTube. I'm like, if they get me, I'ma get you too. They got their guns out, they ain't gonna miss me. But soon as they hit me, I'm still taking her with me. Reggie Noble's in the mother looking house. That's right. Case Salo's in the whole of the house. You know, little Vaughn, we rockin' and on and on. We won't stop till the break of dawn. Peace to Bismarck, rest in peace. The freestyle, the original rap criminal, Strong Island. That was hot. Yo. Thank you. 
That's real MCs right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we be getting MCs and he don't know what they doing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, listen. My man wasn't scripted. He know what I was going to throw on. Pump that. Pump that. Pump that. Pump that. <laughs> pump that. All right. Hey, K Solo in the building. All right, man. That was our surreal moment of the day. I didn't even know it was going to go that way, but I'm happy, man. You got me happy. All right. So, uh, I was telling you the story about, you know, how y'all inspired me to rhyme. And um, now I want to ask you, man, any rappers that inspired you? You know what I'm saying In the beginning When you was getting ready To do your thing When you was hopping on there Spelling out all these ABCs Man uh, Any any rappers inspired you to rhyme Yeah they all did Um, I just like the fact To see that they were Making a business Out of something And making it bigger For other people Like myself Reggie And EPMD All of us Just to be a part of something I was the oldest In the crew So EPMD was watching me Rhyming when I was very young Um, I used to be on the milk crate Rapping at the house parties But um I gotta give Shot Parrish a shout because he came back and got me. Yeah, yeah. And if he didn't, I don't know where I would be. So <clears throat> I always gotta give respect to Parrish because, and to be in jail and hear people say, yo, one of them EPMD dudes come, is outside and they hear you get bailed out, it just was a real moment for me. For sure. To see him actually show up in that Corvette to Riverhead to bail me out. It was crazy. Man, I'm sitting here looking at this time, man. I'm, 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 I'm looking at this time. I'm like, dang, I wish I had more. Um, I'm gonna fast forward through some things. I know you did the uh, tell the world, my, um, tell the world my name joint. That was 1990. Um, you, you, of course, you know we already know the singles off of that. Your mom's in my business. The spellbound joint. Let me ask you something about the spellbound joint real quick, man, because I, I've told everybody, you know, what I'm saying you're a real al alphabetical type of dude. Um, so. I, in my opinion, this is probably what I consider your most controversial track of all times. Is that correct? The Spellbound Joint? Yeah, yeah, very yeah definitely. <laughs> um, so now, um, of course, you know, you, uh, 92, you drop your second project. On this, on this project right here, at the time, I don't think nobody knew, but... The first joint you got on there, you taking some shots at uh, my man DMX, though, right? Not on the first one. Not the first joint? No, cause I didn't know. See, when I met him, and it, it was I was I was cool with him, you know, being the, and you know, rhyming, and we we weren't even battling. We were just exchanging. No, I mean the, the first joint when you were talking about like in the lyrics, you was talking about like on, basically on, like on, who, who, how how did you uh, how that's did you on write Letterman. Spell, yeah, that's yeah, on Letterman. Letterman. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. second album. But my thing was like he's coming out using this as his intro. Okay. And I kept telling the PMD, if we don't handle this, which was a very big thing too why we lost, because they wouldn't even back me up in anything. Yeah, yeah. So how can you be doing that in hip hop? This is hip hop. Yeah, yeah. This is where we supposed to do that at. Yeah. So when you did that, and then Swiss Beats became the best, bigger producer in, outside of eight months. Yeah, he bigger was. Bigger than Eric Sherman. Yeah, he was doing so his thing. So you couldn't, I had to go to Dr. Dre's house. I couldn't hang out. And I wasn't. I'm a warrior. So yeah, let's talk about okay. So let's talk about your time over at um, Death Row. So this was about ninety what mid ninety three. Yeah. Okay. So ninety three. Um, you link up with uh with, with man. What's it like working with Suge Knight, bro? Like, I didn't have an issue with Suge. Um, but again, he he's my age, and they never had any money. And when you give somebody money, they're gonna lose their mind, and that's yeah. what happened. It, it's simple. He didn't know. He never did any of that to me. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't carry myself like that. You okay. know, and um, and not that Dre did neither, but it's just you didn't have no money, and now you got all this money. But I mean, we hear about all the gangster stuff that was going yeah, on. Yeah, that like whole area is like that. But my whole thing is, did you know, um, you know, when I was over there and I was having conversations with people like Chili Red and them, they never even read the Bible before. So I was having different conversations with people, and I was realizing that a lot of these guys didn't have that kind of. Um, they didn't even know what that was. Gotcha. So, you know, everybody wasn't um, as they try to make it out to be. I had words with um, Heron one day. He came in there and thought we was playing with the phone, and I closed the door on him, and I didn't have an issue. Um, well, let me ask you this, because I know, I, I know, you know, Pac, when he got the death row, he, um, it was a million people. It was a bunch of stuff that he just did that never got released and stuff like that. So my question becomes, did you ever work with Pac, man? Did you ever do any tracks with him, anything like that? I seen Pac when he got out. He hugged me. He was like, oh, snap, the fugitive. But Pac was bent on destroying Biggie Small so much that I tried to stay, stay away clear from of it because gotcha. 
when Buckshot and them got into a not Buckshot, Strange One and them got jumped by Biggie, they were there, mm -hmm. and he was cultivating all of these dramas to go to war. And Dr. Dre didn't want no part of it. Snoop mm -hmm. didn't want no part of it. I wasn't gonna get involved. Um, and the only one he had fueling the flames was Shook and him. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, um, so. Yeah, because basically, so now the time you spent with Death Row, basically after um, Pac. Before I was there before him, and and then when Dre left, I left the next day. Ah, okay, I got you. So I waited for Dr. Dre to leave, but Dr. Dre didn't come didn't have a conversation with me. I didn't know what was going on. And had, he would have told me, and then later on, my brother, one of my guard brothers, no, not my guard brother, my guard brother's brother knocked Shug out because he was working for uh, Akon. And he wound up knocking Sugar out anyway. So it wasn't like, <laughs> no, it really wasn't because we come from that kind of stuff on yeah. our side. And my brother from Brooklyn, who was working for Akon as his manager, he knocked him out. Okay. Cold. Okay. Hey, he shook press charges on him and everything. So it wasn't a good, I wish I could have stopped it because like I told my family, Sugar always looked out for me. I didn't have an issue with Sugar. For sure. You I know, got you. I didn't have that issue with him. For sure. And I, and and, I, and I, but 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 I was loyal to Dr. Dre. When Dre left, I, I left too. I didn't want to be like, oh, hey, let me stay and see what happens. I didn't do that. For sure. For sure. All right. So I want to play a game with you real quick. Okay. Man. Cool. Let's play. Uh, let's have some fun. Um, so I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind when I say this word, right? Okay. All right. I mean, just honest. The first thing that comes to your mind. Dmx. B rock. B rock. One second, one second, one second. It's a Real Talk Radio. You on? Yes. Can you guys play T-Rex, Let Me Down Again? Y'all loving that. Okay, we definitely can get that back on for you. All right, no doubt. Okay. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you. Yeah. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna chill for a second. Um, B-Rock. What's up with B-Rock? I don't know nothing about it, man. You gotta, you gotta educate so, me. So, DMX... He likes to smoke cocaine. He was a cocaine smoker. Ooh. <laughs> so. <laughs> I didn't know he was going that way with it, man. Well, he was. Well, that's when I he met was him. Doing something. <laughs> he got he got caught in Amityville for smoking drugs, and he I met him in uh, Riverhead, and he was he got caught smoking B Rock, and um, he got locked up. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. He was a his father. Was, did you know DMX's father's an artist also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe yeah. B Barker from Philly. He's a homeless guy, but he draws. He's DMX's father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you notice, I didn't know that. Did hear that? I did hear about that. Yeah. yeah. So if you notice the parallel between our fathers, my dad wrote books. Okay. Right. DMX's father was an artist, so DMX art form was there. But DMX is not a a, a, a fuck. He's not a um. He's not. He's not um. He's not an intellectual. So how does he say he wrote Spellbound? And I'm gonna give you the rhyme he wrote, and he said he wrote Spellbound. This is what made me like. God bless him. I love him. I'm not mad at him. I love X. Yeah, man. Rest in peace. But he goes, but he goes, but he goes, but he goes. Another MC tried to be I T E, but he went to C A U G H T. How do you go to C A U G H T? How do you go to Cot? <laughs> so you knew. I didn't want to be like, you know. Yeah, you, but see, that's what Joe Lane was, man. That's no, I'm just saying, but if you hear, like, that's if you. Joe Lane. <laughs> but my culture is so crazy. There was people believing him. Right. So, I, and we come from a culture that they would believe a ro a person that robs smokes crack just because they like him. They believe yeah. him over somebody who's really what what I am. I'm well, he was, I think he was just hot at the time. I think that's what it was. No, he, that, listen, I, I take really nothing from his gifts. He had gifts. If he yeah. could have controlled it better. Yeah. Because remember, fire can cook your food or burn you in your right. house. His fire burned his house down and took him with him but my thing is he was talented no so let me let me, let me, let me, let me say this about okay so the joint dmx he did a spellbound version too and um but the thing was like it didn't even it didn't sound nothing have you ever heard that song spellbound dmx it didn't sound nothing like the dmx yeah, that, that we know remember. so that was kind of that kind of raised my suspicion when he lay claim to write in spellbound like that didn't even sound like well, here's the thing that made it, here's the thing too our culture is always gotta come at each other we can't exist with each other in the room. We gotta find a way to knock the other guy down. It's the something that was bred in, right the, it's something that's bred in our culture. It's sad, but I never didn't root for him. I only was defending what I did. And it was hard for me to explain to people. I remember I seen him up at the Apollo with Reggie and Meth, and I said, Meth, tap him on the shoulder. I want him to see me here. 
And Meth tapped him on the shoulder, and he 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 moved. He didn't he didn't come to me. He got away. Right. You know, my whole thing was this. I didn't want to do that with him. I wanted to be okay. You you want to do that? You want to rap like that? Cool. But let's do it. Don't say you did it to, to to denounce what I'm doing because I did it to help kids in our community want to read. I didn't do it to create any drama. For sure. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why me and the black community representing my hood, I'm being attacked for doing something that helps our kids out. I didn't understand that. Plus, I think, you know, hearing your version of the story, I think going to retrospect, putting it all together, I think he had a beef with when you released that second record and you did the Letterman, you know what I'm saying? I think he probably... He was like doing it before that, though, because he was doing it already. He was like saying he wrote it. He had an article in the source saying... K stole it, oh, and okay. I was like, and I was like, and it was weird because he would show up at shows trying to get on the mic, and I would tell him, I'd say, "Yo, this like it was really crazy." Like, yeah. for me, it was just crazy because I didn't understand where it was coming from. So let, let's go back for, again for the people who don't know this situation. This is a lot of younger, you know, people who probably would be interested in this. Um, so you met DMX in prison, right? And um, and y'all y'all freestyle battled in prison. No, we just. Exchange, you know, with everybody, these rappers that I hear on these platforms, they always say a battle. A battle is cutting aces in, like we're rhyming against each other and content to destroy each other. When you are saying, okay, you kick a, ver a 16 and I kick it, that's not a battle. Oh, that's, okay, true. That's your, and their perception of it is automatically turning us at each other yeah. when it's not even that. Okay, I get it. You understand? Because, because you know, he's singing his lyrics, I'm singing my lyrics, and that was it. And right. then when I did Spellbound, I had one verse of it. The other inmates laughed at him. And he couldn't re he couldn't rebuttal it. I got you. So cause you got to remember this is what happened. Me and him met in '88. So it's kind of like what they doing nowadays with the versus thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah, what, but, what they but calling y'all a battle is is really just a you're just like celebrating person. each other's music. Like with him and Snoop sure. did that. That's what they. That's what we did in jail. So, got you. Got, so, you, got so, you. So 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 and then when they left and because because really, he couldn't answer back, there was it made it look like I won, but it really wasn't. A battle it was like okay you got that oh listen to this for sure you know, yeah. we're in jail trying to get each other's uh, hopes up oh that's dope check this out for sure and that's all that was and then when we left we shook her down and we hugged and i said yo man you dope he said you dope too and that was it and next thing you know i get on with epmd and now he's doing this yeah man let me ask you this question bro so he gets out and what's this 98 98 he starts popping off and he does the uh, of course man it's a classic well, let's song let's get deep let's get deep I had the dog in my music first. I said the first rhyme I wrote was, "My style's aggressive like a pit bull terrier." He took that, mm -hmm. so he started barking after. Because if you do ninety-eight of him, he's not barking. Do the research. He's not barking. Okay, that's what I'm saying. My community's so messed up. They don't even Man. research this. They yeah. just go whatever they see. They Wherever just they like it. right. They rolling, they rolling with. It. Even if he gets broke up, because yeah. he could. Because I'm a pugilist. I can really fight. I would have hurt him. If I would hit him, he would have been done. So you got to remember, the people don't care about that. They yeah. just want to see blood sport. Right. And you were going to see it. For sure. You would have definitely saw it. Because so, so let me, so I want to ask, my, my question is, when he came out with the Get At Me Dog, right, how did you feel when you first heard that record? I laughed because he was saying <laughs> to me, like, how did I hide my skirt in front of Sugar now? But I'm one of those guys that go anywhere. I'm never a dude that doesn't. Listen, Red Man says it to this day. If I ever get in something, I'm going to get my brother and we're going to handle it. I'm not running because I, I know my culture and I know that if I'm a man and I put my pants on the same way you do and I don't violate you and you violate, you're in trouble, not me. So let me ask you this. Since, um, you th This kind of segues perfectly into the next question I wanted to ask you. Um, Red Man, Method Man, LL Cool J, Cannabis, all these dudes on the uh, 4321 joint, right? right? How did you feel during this time frame that your man, Red Man, he's on the track with uh, with DMX? Like, how he did that make you think about it? No, because like I said, I don't. I never had another problem with him. He had the problem with me. I never had a problem with X. Okay. But let me explain but it was, this. There wasn't no looking at no, like Red Man. No, not at all. Okay. Not at all, because you know why? This is business. And my brother never, ever 
played me left anyway. He would always like only yeah, one he, time he he didn't when I said yo tap him on the shoulder and he didn't and I went to Method Man and made Method Man do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time Ripley yeah. gave me some pushback. Okay. The only time. All right, all right. But I'm a solid guy, and I'm really confident. And I never got mad like Reggie says. When Reggie started selling the platinums, I never, I know what I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a different animal. I'm, I was never like, oh, why is it me? I was never that guy, and and I never will be like that. For <coughs> sure. You know, and there's not a lot of people that's as solid as that. For sure, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, I'm really I solid. I'm really solid in the sense of my confident in myself. I'm very confident, and I'm very and I'm not thirsty. I'm not over anxious about other people's success. I, I don't. I, as long as I'm good in my skin, I'm cool. It doesn't matter how many records you sold. I've been in the room with Snoop Dogg, Flo Rida, Redman, Method Man. They all did great, and I don't have a problem. I'm still a thunder stealer. For sure. And if they're not on this square, I will still still thunder. I'm still that dude. All right, man. Well, listen, man. Let's uh, let's take a real quick break, man. We'll make a commercial break. We'll be right back. Okay, Solo in the building, the original rap criminal. Indeed. Check it out. Right. Yo, 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 Surreal Talk Radio, we back. Your man Calico, the Surrealist in this thing. I got my cousin exclusive in the building and our special guest, K Solo. We're going to go a little overtime with this interview since we started late. Um... So K Solo man, we back. I want to talk to you about. Uh, I want to talk to this beef. This beef too, um, man. One of the things about this thing that was it was crazy to me is you strapped up and you took a lie detector test about this whole uh, DMX and Spellbound situation, <laughs> right? Yeah. My man strapped up and took a lie detector test, right? So um, you were the first one in hip hop to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the people be lying all the time. For I sure. have no reason to lie. And if you and and, and let me clear that up too because. He made it sound like I said something wrong, but I have I had everything right. Yeah. Well, I watched the interview, man, and, and so um, so here's the thing: it was one question on there. I think it was question number eight that uh, the guy that was giving the test he was saying that uh, it was some inconsistency, like basically, like he wasn't <laughs> saying that you was lying, but, no, he, but was, he was. What just else saying is he gonna him. say? Who sold the most records out of me and him? Who, what else is he gonna say to sell what he's doing? Because remember, he had to pay for that. Right. So let's but, be but let, let's be real. Let's be real. He said you wrote Spellbound. Right. You battled him and beat him. Right. Right. Yeah, I got yeah. all that right. 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 Did he have anything to do with it? I answered it wrong. Right. Well, he, he made it more famous than me by saying he wrote it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I should have said. Right. Well, he didn't really say that. He didn't really say that you answered it wrong. He was just saying that. Um, when he, he said, had, "Well, that one is." He said that one is probably not true. This is what he said. But I'm saying to him is this: If I got all of these right, seven, yeah. how can I have the eight wrong when I beat him in the battle? Yeah. I wrote spellbound. I lied to my I mother. His, I got everything right, but I think his point was. Did he have anything to do with it? Come I think on. his point was that. What else some, he, he, he was like saying some of the lyrics that was in the song as if DMX uh, as if maybe you could have cloned some of the lyrics that was in the song not all not the whole song okay. but a portion well, of let it let me say this to you do you believe a crackhead <laughs> honestly I want you to know I want your honest opinion black America I want to ask you do you honestly believe a person that smokes B-Rock steals robs over a person who raised in the Salvation Army Church, boxed and did not steal, went and had a job, you believe, and then that's, that's fine if you do. I don't have a problem with no, it. No, 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 I mean. I'm hey. just saying because I know what I did and I know I'm an intellectual. So yeah. if you hear my music, yeah, yeah. Spellbound fits in my portfolio. It don't fit in his. I, be I believe that to be true. So it's I not, I'm not be being, I'm not being disrespectful. I can agree I'm with that. I'm not being disrespectful <laughs> when you hear <laughs> my. No, no, because it didn't sound like DMX's work. Right, he just was like mad because I had that run yeah. And he wanted to take that too. He was like, "Nah, man, he really believed he was this guy, which is fine." Okay, but there's always someone better than you. There's always someone that is gonna beat you. There's always somebody better. Right. And I'm not disrespecting him. Yeah. Love him. He's my Earl to the to the cattle to the cows. Come on, love him. So, so the so rapper I ever ever besides Red battle with yeah. Besides Reggie, he's I think Reggie's better though, but I think he's good. Yeah, yeah. And I don't knock him, but. You know, a lot of that's me too. The dog came from me. If you listen, well, listen, man. I want to say this, bro. For your career, looking at it, to even be acknowledged, to, to for y'all to be in this going at it, to, yeah, to yeah. even have this conversation yeah. with someone like him, yeah, that 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 speaks volumes for your career, man. And yeah. and I wanted to ask you this: How did you feel 
when you heard that he passed away? I was bothered by it. You was bothered? Yeah, because, I, let me say, I'm very emotional when it comes to my community and what it needs and what it represents. Um, I, I never thought we should have did that. I thought that the powers that be, the way the world works, created that for us. Us watching Ali and Frazier, that created yeah. that for us. I never really thought, or my heart was never in it for that. Right. You know, I, I would I'd like the guy that was struggling and I would like to root for him. I was that guy. Man, you know what, bro? I hear what you're saying because I had beef with a dude that passed away, too. Yeah, and we did disc records that. to each other. Yeah, I didn't want to see that. I mean, we did disc records, bro. And when he passed away, um, man, you, 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 you guys know the unit boys and, and all the, uh, the dude Phil that was in the group. Man, me and dude, we went at it. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, he we squashed the beef. Before he passed, we squashed the Good. beef, you know what I'm saying? And But see, the thing about it was, I was young. So when we squashed the beef, in my mind, I was still like, yeah, but I got you, you know what I'm saying? And then when he passed away, you didn't feel that way. I, it, it messed me up because I was like, man, I was on some yeah. F-boy stuff, you know what I'm saying? When I could have kept it real with him, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and squash, truly squashed the beef. So I feel what you're saying, you know what I'm saying? But I think that with you two, it was necessary for y'all to flex what y'all was strong in. You know what I'm saying? I think it was good for y'all to, to get it out and stuff. I would have loved to have seen y'all come together on some squash it type stuff. I think we would have been a dope group too, but my whole thing with him was this. Yeah. Um, you know, he just like I said, it was stupid. It didn't make it didn't mean nothing. Okay, you wrote spellbound. I wrote spellbound. Right. We're arguing about this. We're spellbound. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we're arguing about this. <laughs> right, this right. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and this is what I mean about our community. Do we own land? Do we have? Yeah. Do we have? Now you're talking about some real stuff. That's yeah, what, ownership. Yeah. Do we have we ownership? Lack, we, we don't we have lack it. ownership, but we spend a lot on everyone yeah. else. Right. Yeah. And we, we make pick everybody, everybody else. Rich. Right. Yeah. And it's like. I think about that, you know. I listen to Thomas Sowell, and I'm like, "Woo!" I, I and and it, and it throws back, just like I said, with all of this, to challenging each other. We still don't own hip hop, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we're challenging each other that's, for what? And then that's real. And when he goes to the ground, you know, the headstone. It took seven months to get there. It's like I, I'm, I'm not bothered by that. Yeah, I'm bothered by even LL and cannabis to the point where it was. You guys are you guys are from cannabis. You're from Jamaica. Todd, you're Bayesian. We're gonna do this yeah. for these guys. Well, that's what I think. We but don't get me wrong. But don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I didn't blame L because I understand how L looked at it when he said, K -K "I snatch your crown with your head still." That was enough for L to go. Okay, let me, let me. I get it. But they still should have WWF'd it yeah, yeah, to the yeah. point where they both made money and. Yeah. I don't think That's somebody should have lost. Like, I, I love how Nas and Jay Z did it. You know what I'm saying? Like I think we should exercise more of that. In even more, even more than that, Jay Z was horrible too. You put, you did that to his girls. Like, where is the compassion? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You, but when you dissing, you dissing. You know what I'm saying? No, I know, but it gotta be a line when you coming from where we coming from. I'm not saying I'm not trying to soften it up. I'm just yeah. saying there, there's gotta be a middle line where we go. We don't cross these lines. Yeah, I feel you. I'm on still that. You know looking for the Elton John disses. Who who he diss? <laughs> who 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 Aerosmith Smith yeah, diss? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's what like, I'm saying. Do they, they even don't. need to worry about doing verses like right. you no, hear no, they yeah. David Bowie doing the no, verses they don't. against any? No, well, you know that's the, but but that is the spirit of hip hop though. Like we know that it's competitive. You know what I mean? We in it. You know I mean? Come on. How many how many times have you? Look at these. You know kids as, a, all, as all a fan growing up looking at the groups break up it's always some point where the groups everybody want to be the leading scorer on the squad right nobody yeah. want to play defense nobody right. want to be exactly. the grunt yeah. everybody want to be the superstar player and you know you can't be the superstar player right. but in hip hop everybody got a bravado right that they trying to outmatch the yeah, outmatchers that's what I'm saying. and yeah. then it's just that's chaotic that's but you know what I gotta give Dre that's why I give Dre props though cause Dre never